guys, we back. 2021, super pleased guys that we're back and doing dine at home. It seems like every single man and his dog are doing dine at home boxes in 2021. It's okay, you just need to stick here with dine at home. It's all good. First week, absolute bumper set out. Absolutely delighted. Thank you to each and every one of you who have purchased the box this week. Uh, I am absolutely over the moon with your support guys. It feels so good to be back. Uh, tough, tough week uh, in essence of bringing back in the kitchen. I enjoy the two weeks that we had. But as I said, it's super cool to be back in the kitchen. Uh, me and Mike get smashed this week and we're really happy with the menu as well. So without further ado, let's continue and crack on with this week's box. So guys, for all the newcomers, as we are continuing where we left off, a beautiful Cotswold Crunch uh, loaf to share, tear and share. Simply pop that into your oven at 180 degrees for five minutes and that'll make it nice and warm and obviously crispy. And also you'll get delivered your iconic Marmite butter, our signature butter, uh, which obviously whipped to Marmite butter. Uh, as soon as your box arrives, guys, get that straight out of the box and put it into a, into a place where it's going to keep it room temperature so it's nice and nice and soft, obviously, when you enjoy your bread. Uh, and we'll move straight on to your first course, bread out of the way, super, super simple. So, your first course is a beautiful uh, crispy pork belly. So, we've brined and then uh, baffed uh, the pork belly and then pressed it and made a nice little slice, ch chunky slice of pork belly out of that. Uh, we've also served a little uh, five spice uh, sort of, it was a five spice mix basically that we're going to be, you at home are going to coat the pork belly in. Uh, a delicious satay sauce that carries a little bit of heat, it's got a little bit of chilli in there, uh, but not, not hot at all, just a little bit of heat. And then a delicious teriyaki dressing, so you'll see that we've sort of infused the teriyaki uh, with sort of lime leaf, lemongrass, a little bit of chilli, uh, a bit of ginger as well. Um, to give that a good shake up to get all that sort of flavour mixed up with the soy and the uh, sesame oil. Compressed apple, to those who have had a New Year's Eve box to remember the compressed apple, it's completely raw. You can see it's almost translucent uh, in the uh, in, in the uh, in the light. Uh, that's just a nice bit of texture, a bit of crunchiness uh, to the dish. And then you've got a nice pickled uh, carrot, we've actually used um, carrot juice to pickle these as well. So a little bit of, uh, bit of, uh, bit of um, what my vinegar, carrot juice, and a little bit of sugar and salt as well. So that's just for a little salad uh, on the side. So I'm just going to teach you or to show you quickly how to uh, heat the pork belly. So first of all, pop your uh, pop your uh, five spice mix into um, into a tray. I'm just going to pop my pan on now. So you don't want to, you don't want the pan too hot when you start this. Do specify that in the instructions. Don't get your pan too hot because you'll burn both the pork and equally the uh, flour or the uh, the five spice mix as well. So please don't get your pan too hot. Pop that on now. Keep that on nice and low. And while that's ticking over, we can then get the pork belly. So, as you can see with the tray, you just want to brush all that on. Nice and simple. Both ends. If obviously you've got two doing both at the same time. And it's very important, don't keep it all caked on like that. Tap it against your, against your hand, all back in the pan. And make sure you get that residual uh, flour or that, that five spice mix up because if you keep it on it's going to be so so strong. You can reuse that as well as long as you because obviously because the pork belly is cooked it's you know it's um, it's not dangerous at all using a raw product so you can use it. I'll probably use it for the next sort of two to three days but if you want to do something similar um, obviously if you want to put some chicken in there or anything to marinate you can you're more than welcome to obviously do that but obviously don't use it after you uh, use anything raw inside it. So make your way over I'll show you how to uh, start the the frying process. Just simply use some veg or sunflower oil. I'd always recommend sort of uh, veg or sunflower oil because it heats up to a higher temperature. Uh, obviously not specific to this, but it didn't burn, so you don't get a burnt sort of uh, flavour to it at all. Uh, it's much rather you use veg or sunflower oil over olive oil, especially extra virgin for cooking. Okay, so we'll pop that in. There's a very, very light sizzle. Uh, to that, and that's exactly what you want. We're going to do really, really gently, and leaving it on that side, making sure the oil's all there. I'll bring it to you. So make sure the oil's all around it. It's a very, very slight sizzle. That's exactly what we're doing. We're almost a sealing, or searing, or sealing that sort of uh, crust on the outside. That's all we want to do. So that'll take about 30 to 60 seconds each side. So I'll flip it over, but I'll keep flipping it over all the time. I won't just do one side only because you want the sense to be fully reheated. So I'll probably take about two to three minutes to reheat and crisp it up and we'll get that coating around the pork belly. So join us about two to three minutes when I'll show you the colorization and I'll finish off with a little knob of butter 
at the end as well, and then we'll start to play. So super, super simple. Okay, so see you in two or three minutes. Okay, guys. So it's been about two to three minutes on the uh, on the pork belly. So I just I've probably picked about four to five, to maybe even six times. Just continuously, just to sort of turning that over all the time to make sure you get a nice caramelisation. That sort of five spice crumble, so like crust. It's, it's, sorry, that crumble. It's um, it's formed a crust on the pork belly, so just crisping that up really nicely. I did literally just one other butter. That's it, right at the end. Just keeping control of the heat all the time. Because I'll be honest with you, that, that, that the heat started getting quite high, and that sort of pulled the pan up. And the residual heat of the pan will continually cook your or heat your your pork belly. So just keep that into the pan as well. Because I said to you, you want to keep it hot all the time. Leave that to one side. I've got a little resting tray there. Obviously, when we do eventually uh, want to just um, sort of pass off some of the butter, so we don't want all the butter sitting in the middle of the plate. Um, I've got quite a small plate, so I've piled everything up. On the, on the instruction, I did say with your um, satay sauce, which is it's literally absolutely delicious. And with the satay sauce, though, you can heat it up if you would like to, it's totally up to you. If you do heat it up, obviously it'll be a little bit looser, so you can probably use it as a sauce if you wanted to. This is a bit more of a sort of a mayonnaise sort of texture, so I'm going to utilise it for the bottom of the, of the plate. But again, you can plate it, that's the, that's the joy of dining at home, you can plate it however you like. So in, this, in the uh, carrot, you'll see this, we've we sort of made a, made a spaghetti out of, the, uh, out of the carrot there. So just pick that out, don't, don't want too much of the, uh, of the, res of the, of the liquor, of the res uh, residual um, liquor that's in there. You just sort of want uh, mainly the carrot, but you can, you can obviously pass that off if you'd like to through a sieve, just to obtain as much of the carrot as possible. Um, you can season it with a little bit of salt again if you'd like to, but I wouldn't recommend it, I think it's absolutely fine. There's absolutely sauce, so obviously, uh, been seasoned with a little bit of soy sauce as well, so that's quite salty. Teriyaki obviously has got soy sauce and stuff again, that's quite salty, so I wouldn't say you would need that too much. As you can say, the, uh, the uh, apple itself, you can leave the skin on, you don't need to take the skin off at all, just dice it up as, as small as you possibly can, uh, just to add that little burst of texture throughout the whole entire dish. This is for two people, so obviously you won't need a full slice between two of you because you've got about 20, 20 pieces out of there. Just like that, pork belly is resting, satay sauce is there as well, so we can start to play as simple as that. This is for one person, so I'll just get a little bit of the pan on there. Nice little spoon in the middle, again guys, you can play this however you like. I think it's really important that you get, mm, delicious. I think mean, it's really important that you get a mouthful of the satay sauce in every single mouthful of the dish. Just serve that. Starting up the centre. That's my piece of pork belly and the carrot salad. Just up as well as it builds up. Beautiful. And then half the apples. There's a nice bit of colour and even better texture. So we all know pork and apple with uh, that. Is that the new combination? Beautiful compressed, compressing apple juice as well, so it's almost emphasises that beautiful flavour and then this is for two people this is super super strong so just have a little taste of it before you actually put it on the plate guys to make sure it's you okay with that flavour and uh, teriyaki dressing quite an Asian inspired first course there guys great to be back five spice crisped, um, crispy pork belly with pickled uh, carrot salad compressed apple the base of that is uh, a lovely satay sauce and then the dressing is a beautiful teriyaki dressing. Enjoy, enjoy me in a few minutes for your main course guys. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed your, uh, your start up. Uh, you're on to your main course which is a lamb rump to share. This is from Charlie at uh, Water Rose. So it's a 10 ounce rump. So we've got, normally we go 9 ounces, we've got 10 ounces because um, yeah, I just got the, the bigger the better basically. So this is a 5 ounce rump and obviously I feel all the people have in one box. Uh, and obviously you'll have this to yourself, simple as that, it's pointless me cooking a whole uh, rump off to yourself, you would be cooking exactly the same um, as you would with a singular one, but with you guys remember having a double. Beautiful leek puree, you'll notice it's not like a vibrant green colour, the reason why is because we, uh, we burn all our zest, the, uh, the butter, so basically you know, you're dark and foamy, going like a nutty brown colour, then we add all the leeks in, so again it's not vibrant but the flavour is absolutely delicious. Uh, this is a mint ketchup, guys. I've done this a couple of times before, but I normally blend the mint leaves into the into the water, into the solution. Uh, but this time I've actually infused it instead, so it's completely clear. The, the, the intensity of the flavour is even more so. 
uh, because I think it keeps that intensity of the, of the mint as opposed to uh, when you blend it and you break it down too much in my opinion. So give it a go, but let me know if you, if you obviously like the ketchup as well. Nice part of the lamb sauce, super simple, lamb stock, lamb, uh, lamb bones reduced down. Beautiful uh, braised leek. Uh, this one piece is to share, guys. So as I said on the instructions, you can halve it. Totally up to you how you want to halve it. You can halve it straight down the middle if you want. Or I personally like to uh, go lengthways and uh, sort of have that flesh side roasted in the pan. That's totally, that's totally up to you guys. Whatever you think is obviously easier. I would certainly recommend cutting those uh, when they're cold, like the fridge would use a hell of a lot easier because they're a lot more solid. And then finally is your lamb fat potato, uh, which has basically been uh, cooked in, in, in just pure lamb fat, and then we just cook them in the oven at 150 degrees for about an hour, hour and a half in lamb fat and butter. That's it, super, super simple. Uh, that does require a little bit of seasoning, everything else is pretty much there, other than obviously the lamb itself, uh, your season, like a raw piece of steak, essentially, uh, like a raw piece of lamb. So as you can, as you can see, Pan is on the bottom of the low heat, but it is starting to smoke. So that means it's literally ready for us to uh, us to go. I'll pop my leek on there. I'll also pop my lamb fat potato on there as well. Uh, the ketchup is to be enjoyed at room temperature. The leek puree is just to be heated up in the microwave as normal. 30 seconds is, is fine. And then the the lamb sauce obviously heated on the stove. Uh, right, let's let's get going. Uh, in the uh, in each bag, you'll get a little chunk of rosemary and obviously your beautiful piece of lamb rub. And also you may have a little bit of uh, garlic in there as well. Take those out. It's only been cooked in oil. Obviously you'll see some of the lamb sort of liquid has come out as well. That will start to sizzle in the pan a little bit too much. So make sure you drain that one. You're ready to go. So, same again with the oil guys. Obviously the lamb is coating the oil. So you don't need a lot of tools. a little drip. Just to obviously get some, uh, some liquid in the pan there. Nice little bit of uh, table salt. We want to heavily sort of roast it on this fat side. Okay, so a little bit of table salt on top of there, and then we'll start roasting on that side. And all we're looking for is a nice bit of colour, colourisation on that side. It'll start to colour straight away, as you can see. It'll start to colour straight away. Now, as the lamb is, uh, is completely cooked, we're only reheating it. But essentially, the reason why I cook it is because the lamb rump is essentially quite a tough cut. Uh, so, me by me, me water back in it for an hour, it removes that essence of, 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 of sort of firmness and equally essence of chewiness. So hopefully you'll get a nice sort of medium, medium to rare uh, rump steak, but essentially it'll be nice and soft as well. That's the whole reason why I water back it. It's taking that sort of um, that hardship out of your cooking. So we are, we are obviously reheating. Essentially you'll cook it for a similar amount of time as you would a steak anyway. Uh, because it's a rubber cut or, or a harsher cut, Done the hard work for you by water bucket, which, is, which is what the diner home is all about, right? Okay, so you can see that the lamb uh, skin or the fat is starting to colour beautifully. I'm going to continue with that. I'll render that right now. I'll start to season the top of it as well now. It's all the sides seasoned. And then we'll just gently flip it onto one side and we'll start treating it as a steak now. It's like 10 to 15 seconds either side, that's it just to get that sort of um, caramelisation all around. And also essentially you're searing the piece of meat as well. I'm a firm believer that when you sear the meat, the meat inside is going to be a little bit more juicier. Because essentially you know, if you're searing it, no, meat, no uh, liquid or juiciness can escape. This is then the tail piece, just so you can see just the piece of the side of the all sides beautifully covered. The butter, so flip it back over onto that fat side because that can literally render all day long. These have been seasoned already, but I'm going to add a little bit of salt on the inside just to, just to make sure that inside is seasoned. Pop that in there as well, and that will take seconds to cook, absolutely seconds. At this stage, we'll add our rosemary and a little bit of garlic, start getting roasting as well. And about Couple of the butter. It's exactly the same thing you do at home when you're sharing the piece as well. So it's the exact same process. Obviously, you'll have two leaks and you'll have a little bit bigger, bigger bit of lap. That's the only difference. Okay, so let's have a quick look. The leaks start to colour beautifully inside. The lamp itself, beautifully coloured. So all we've got to do now, you can either leave it in the pan or you can pop your 
potato in there as well, that side down, so it's been roasted, pop it into the oven, and that will literally take, it'll probably take about six to eight minutes for that singular piece. It'll probably take in and around eight to 10 minutes, let me get my oven on. Um, that'll take about six minutes on here. It'll take about eight to 10 minutes at home for the double bit. Obviously, as I've said into the, in the instructions, make sure you rest it as well. So we're gonna rest that for around about three to four minutes. Okay, so six minutes, join us in six minutes. I'll bring it out and we'll have another little break while it's resting and then we'll show you how to play it. okay? No rush, super simple, soon about six minutes. Okay guys, so my six minute timer has just gone up on the oven, so I'll get it out and I'll just show you exactly sort of where you want to be when you're putting your lamb out of the oven. So I've literally put, I haven't pulled it out before, this is exactly how you're going to see it, okay? So, first thing, the lamb's tightened up, so it's obviously got nice and tight. So you can start to see that by some of the muscle groups are starting to loosen very slightly. There's the lamb, that's exactly the sort of texture that we want. When you feel it, it should be really bouncy. Okay, so if it's like, well that's almost more than part of the side, but if it's, if it's, if it's like really tough or, or sort of a bit sort of lethargic in its release, it needs to go in for longer. But this is super bouncy, it springs out straight away, that's exactly where I want it to be. It means inside pumpy. So we just need to rest it, the texture and the firm, and then the sort of softness inside is absolutely ideal. There we are, beautifully roasted your uh, lamb fat fondant, and then obviously you haven't quite got fingers enough to fit the uh, braised leaf over, so I'm just going to show you that. But that's the sort of colour, that's the sort of colour on the braised that you're looking for, guys, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to very simply leave and pull that in the pan, just stop that the residual heat is not too hot so the lamb won't rest but also it's hot enough to keep the lamb and the other the, the lamb fat potato and the leek nice and warm as well and you can easily transfer to a tray equally in the instructions i said you can put you can bake that in the oven or reheat that in the oven in a tray leave it on the tray as well guys okay so join me in three minutes when i come to plate it up so it needs a nice rest the leek puree simply goes into the microwave 30 seconds before you return to meat and as i said to you the meat ketchup is at room temperature the lamb sauce is on, or ready to go on, so that will obviously start to heat up close to the time as well, and we'll all be ready. Okay, so see you in about three to four minutes, and that just sort of chills out and rests. Come back and we'll go for the plating. Okay guys, so my puree has literally just come out of the microwave. Um, fortunately, the container lasts absolutely fine, uh, as we've held it, but the, uh, the lid certainly hasn't, hasn't lasted, so uh, <laughs> when you put it in there, be careful. Uh, sauce is just gone, as you can see, just starting to cook some heat. That's probably fine for about 30 seconds, so I'll grab that in a second. You don't want it to boil and reduce, you just want to obviously heat it back up. This is lovely and hot still. I'm just going to pressure to pop my leek on the side. Same with the potato. I did say at the top of the uh, video as well, the potato is a little bit seasoned. I'm just going to add that to it now, just on the top, because you can add it before. So nice of this, a bit more than sea salt finishing salt on top of there. There's a beautiful lamb. Has just sort of, sort of the tightness has sort of left it now, it's just relaxed a little bit more, but it's still nice and bouncy in the centre. So that's there, uh, that's there, that's there, that's there. So I'll just put that there, it's literally starting to boil and come up beautifully. It's all ready to go. Okay, so this like before, guys, which I said to you, if you know about the, any steaks or prime cuts, I'll come nice and close to actually see all the, uh, all the lines of the meat are going to the left or my left okay so i'm going to go against that because what you want to do you as a customer wants to cut with the grain so as i'm serving it as i'm slicing i'm going to go against the grain and it's really cool. it'll show you the beautiful plush pinkness of the um, of the steak itself close there we are guys okay that's water bath beauty. That's exactly how I personally would recommend you want to be eating your lamb. And the whole reason why is the texture, is, the texture itself is absolutely delicious. Pop a little bit of salt in between there as well. This is obviously optional for you. This is what we do in the restaurants. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's how you want to be sort of having your lamb because it's beautiful, succulent, beautiful, soft, beautiful and soft, nice and pink. Say with or off, whoever you're sharing the, uh, the box with, the new cup tip from scratch, nice and raw. Take all the compliments. So there's the leaf on there, beautiful lamb fat potato. 
beautiful buttery burn noisette leaf puree. Do a nice dollop of that as well. It's delicious. And then finally, your um, beautiful mint ketchup. You can have this on the side, I mean, a little pot on the side if you want to, or you can just dot it in and around the, uh, the plate so you get little bursts of mint ketchup. Trust me, as soon as you open that pot, you will just, you will just absolutely smell of mint straight away. It's quite a nostalgic flavour, it tastes like mint jelly. And then finally, beautiful and sauce, all in and around. Delicious. That's your main course, guys. Nice, wintry, comforting dish of uh, roasted um, lamb rub to share. Obviously, we've bought a back it for you, so the texture is beautiful and soft. Lamb fat roasted potato fondant with your lamb fat leek and then your uh, roasted uh, leek puree and your meat jelly finished up with a delicious lamb sauce, guys. Enjoy your dine at home main course, first one of 2020-21. Join us in two to three minutes for your dessert. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed your uh, your sharing lamb main course. Uh, on to dessert guys. So this one is a, a beautiful uh, Tahitian vanilla panna cotta. Uh, to make, uh, we actually made 14 kilo of panna cotta mix. And I've done one tub between one person, so it's one tub each. Uh, you have a beautiful uh, rhubarb compote, which we've just um, lightly sort of scented with some cinnamon and some star anise. And then a beautiful uh, demerara crumble. Uh, which is completely nut free, just a, just a, a standard sort of crumble mix I'm using demerara so it's a nice caramelised flavour and then a delicious um, ice cream as well. I've called this a fall because essentially it would, it would, be, it would be built up uh, but I didn't want anything to the rhubarb, this is the rhubarb to bleed into the panna cotta before so you get it as a bit you know, of a slurry. So uh, on your, just this next tip, just be really careful because all my panna, whenever I do panna cotta, you can well, take the lid off. Whenever you do a panna cotta, you can see it's super, super soft. I just like to have a real sort of soft jelly texture. So the moment it goes into the bowl, it will just relax completely. It won't stay like this. It's essentially like a junket, uh, and that's exactly sort of how I, would, I, I want this sort of dessert to be sort of eaten, I suppose. That's why I put the extra texture in there. So with this, I've just got some boiling water from the kettle. Just be really, really careful. I've left you about half a centimetre from the top. Just really simply just drop it in the sides will start to uh, loosen slightly, there we are, it'll start to come away, so it's starting to move now. There will be some ex excess liquid, okay, but just, just bear with it, and then with your bowl, upside down, turn that, and then and shoot, and there we are, and that's the panna cutter, okay, just super, super soft, okay, that, that is, might be known, because that is, the perfect texture, right? right? Absolutely perfect. So you just want it nice and soft, so literally when you put it in your mouth, it just sort of melts with the heat of your mouth. Okay, so that's the set um, panna cotta. So you'll get obviously one each of the beautiful rhubarb uh, ice cream compote, which you said essentially is super, super soft. I'm going to just, because it's, it's really manageable, you can sort of move it to one side. So I'm actually going to put the rhubarb compote and put quite a lot of this on there because it won't sort of break the acidity. The acidity of the rhubarb to break through the um, sort of creamy richness of the um, of the of the uh, panna cotta. You're going to do a crumble on top, go that sort of all over. Too much of that quite a lot as well, which is great. And I'm just going to take a little spoon of the rhubarb ice cream. Just pop that right on the side. Like that, finish up with a little more of the crumble. There, guys, super simple, so seasonal, delicious Yorkshire rhubarb, beautiful Tahitian vanilla panna cotta using the finest of ingredients that are banned in the season right now. All obviously UK produce, beautiful rhubarb soup, sorbet with demerara crumble. If that doesn't scream sort of December, January, wintery vibes. I don't know what this guys. And that concludes our return menu 
Coil Dyna High and I couldn't be prouder of the menu guys, so I really hope you all enjoyed it as well. Obviously your final bite with us, the return of the fruit and nut fudge. We're going to make this a mainstay just like the uh, just like the Marmite butter. See, because every time we take it off we get phone calls and emails saying how the fruit and nut fudge back. So that's going to be a mainstay with us for the foreseeable future. And uh, so we guys, so see you same time, same place next week for our end of January menu. And then we'll be going on to February, obviously, and Valentine's Day, which I think there's a few boxes left for Valentine's Day, guys. So if you know of anybody uh, who's interested in Valentine's box, go check out our website, dying-at-home.co.uk, for all the latest information. All the menus are up for January, all the, all the menus are up for February. So please don't hesitate and book along. Guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy the Dine-at-home box and see you next week.